I still got my plug on standby and my scale. I still got my plug on standby and my scale. I still got my plug on standby. Hey, what's going on? I wanted to give y'all a quick little video about some tips and some tricks that I use when I get up in the morning and I'm looking for a load. This is usually how it goes. So I'm going to go pretty fast, you know what I'm saying, just to keep the video short. The first thing I like to do is go to this website right here. It's www.e.i. <laughs> Not my fault. It's www.eia.gov. And basically what I do when I go to this site is I'm just looking for the average for the diesel prices right here. You can see it says highway diesel prices, dollars per gallon. And I'm in the Midwest. So I look and I see that it's at two ninety eight and that was published April 1st. And what they do is every seven days up here, you see that it was published April 1st. The next date they'll publish it will be April 8th. So. I know when I'm looking for loads, if I figure that it's going to cost me three dollars and fifty cent a gallon to run the load, I'm cool. And another thing that I, I do sometime, if I'm just curious about the fuel surcharge is I use this particular company's fuel surcharge just because I don't. I don't know how these companies figure out their fuel surcharge. A lot of them are, they kind of in the same ballpark, but a lot of them different. So I don't know how to tell you to figure out the fuel surcharge. I do know to tell you that if you negotiating a rate on a low and you ask the broker, what's the fuel surcharge? He going to know that you knew and you're going to sound stupid. So anyway, fuel surcharge is really only beneficial if, you getting your own freight or if you trying to price a load and trying to see how much to charge or something like that. So I know around, I was at around $3 a mile. So I know the fuel charge should be about 37 cent. Just, it's just for me to know. And if they include the fuel surcharge, I, I know about how much it should be. So if they telling me that the fuel surcharge is going to be 15 cent per mile, I know that it should be closer to 37, 38 cent based on the region that I'm picking up in. All right, enough about that. Let's 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 get to the the meat and potatoes of the of the thing right here. So I go to the that load board first thing in the morning. I already got it set up to search, so I just tap on my little search parameters. And the first thing I like to do when it come up is just for fun, I like to go by the highest rate just to see who didn't put the most money in here. I, I ain't going to none of these places that got some decent money to me is anything over three thousand dollars so since that didn't work for me i go with smallest deadhead and what i'll do is once this comes up i'll look at these different lows like this chicago to lincoln i'm not interested so i'll delete that and by me swiping to the left what that does is when i refresh my screen it'll stop it from reappearing like if it's a load that i know i'm not interested in i also look at the load count so it's telling me it's 180 lows. That ain't all that good, but it's a start. I've, I've seen this low board sometime where it's less than 100 lows. So things might be taking a turn for the better. And I go through here. Let's just say this Chicago to Shelbyville, Indiana for 750 on 216 miles. I might be interested in that depending on when it pick up. I'll swipe to the right and I add that to my work list. Little green thing will come up in the corner. I don't want to go to New Jersey. I don't want to go to Massachusetts. I don't want to go to Oakdale. Nah, I don't want to go to Louisiana. Not on 900 miles for 1700. That I'm looking at that and I don't understand where they coming up with these rates at. So since I don't understand, we get them off here. Don't want to go to Minnesota. When my going to Ohio, just don't like Twinsburg. Um, not going to Massachusetts, Fort Madison, Iowa. This Allen Lund company, a lot of times they post loads that ain't picking up and delivering in the same spot. Won't even waste my time calling them. That's a partial. That's a partial. I'm looking for a full load. Displays to 43. That's too heavy for me. Bartonville. 
that's too heavy though i didn't see that i don't know what what the hesitation was about that don't want to go to pa don't want to go to new jersey don't want to go to orlando and i'll just keep going through the lows like this right here if i find one that i want to take i'm not sure where they coming up with these rates at but 21 2100 on a thousand one hundred and sixty three miles on a reefer is an insult man get out of here ohio Michigan ain't too bad. They didn't put no rate in this one. Oh uh, yeah, my, I might, uh, I might, I might, I might check on that one. Oh yeah, and then like if you if you make a mistake and you add it to the watch list and you don't want it, all you gotta do is swipe it again and you can remove it. I keep it. I might go back and crawl on that. Lexington, Kentucky. No, that's Lexington, South Carolina. I might want to go there. Bolingbrook, Bolingbrook. VA, VA. So a lot of a lot of the stuff that look like a lot of the lows they got, I'm either going to Texas or going to the East Coast. Right now, I kind of want to stay in the Midwest. I ain't really, they not really offering a lot of money on lows, so I'm not really trying to go too far. I would go to Texas, but they done lost their mind on the race to Texas, so that ain't going to happen. Like the Indiana on 200 miles, if I can get close to like 850 to to $1,000 on 200 miles, then it's worth it. Don't want to go to Florida. Don't want to go to New Jersey. I right, well, Triple T Transportation, sometimes they pay okay, sometimes they don't. I might call them on that. It's kind of early because it's a Friday, and I'm looking for lows that pick up on Monday, so that got a lot to do with it, too. And I would just basically go through this whole list of when I first wake up in the morning. And once I get through the whole list and I done deleted the lows that I don't care about, like going to Colorado, I ain't going, Ohio, PA, Oklahoma, Washington. What that does for the rest of the day is when I scroll back up to the top and refresh it, it'll stop those lows from showing up. Well, I got 185 because obviously somebody didn't post some new lows, but it won't be the lows that I deleted that's showing up. Like VA, I don't, I, I'm not going there. So that's what I do. And then once I get that taken care of, I go to my work list and then I look at the different options that I got to decide if I'm going to call. That's how I narrow down what lows I'm going to call on. I usually like to see the comments, the commodity. Sometimes they put the temperature in there. A lot of times they put comments in there. So that's how I do it, how I get loads. And hopefully this works for you guys and y'all get some tips and tricks from me about using the work list, about the website to check the national diesel average and even a website to check the fuel surcharge although that fuel surcharge thing is a little tricky because they're not mandated to pass on the fuel surcharge to you so it's it's really up to the brokerage company a lot of the big major mega carriers will pass the fuel surcharge on to you and won't take a percentage out of it a lot of broker companies will just tell you that it's included in the rate and a lot of people, that way they can take a percentage of it. So it's a dirty game with the fuel surcharge. So make sure you understand what you're getting into, especially if you're going to speak on it. Hey, this your boy, Icewater 815. It don't matter what type of truck you drive as long as it'll deliver a load. But you ain't going to make no money in trucking if you can't keep that left door closed. I'll see you on the next video. Y'all be safe. Been through a lot of pain in my life, and I pray the Lord take it all away.